heavier. So we also know that helium is what? We've all seen a helium balloon. They're noticeably lighter, right? They float. This, you know, falls pretty easily. Yeah, that's, that's air. Air. That's noticeable, right? So one of these things is not like the others. Which one is it? You know, my dad used to say, oh, that's going to go over like a lead balloon. Oh, it's not lead, but my guess is it was something like that. Right? So, how many of you have done the old with helium? Yeah, you pretty much all have, right? So, you got a helium balloon, next thing you know, you're breathing in and talking like Alvin and the Chipmunks. And, uh, and that's cool, but do we know why? We all made that observation, but why does helium cause your voice to shift to a much higher perceived pitch or frequency? Remember, all gas molecules, no matter what the gas, has the same volume per molecule, right? How does this balloon stay filled? I mean, it's got molecules in there, but what's keeping the walls pushed out compared to an uninflated balloon? Pressure. Pressure. What is what is the force that makes up pressure in a gas? What's that? So, gas molecules occupy the same amount of volume, no matter what the gas molecule, because they have rules. Gases have rules to be a gas. And one is that the gas molecule itself occupies an infinitesimally small volume compared to the volume that it exists in. What does that mean? That means the size of the molecule compared to the space that it's in is insignificant. And that has to be, otherwise a bigger gas molecule would what? Take up more space, right? But gas molecules compared to the area or volume that they're in relatively small. That's why all gas molecules, no matter what the molecule, at a particular temperature, takes up the same amount of space. If that's the case, then there's really not enough interaction between gas molecules to cause a change. And that's also a rule for gases, that the gas molecules themselves can't be very sticky towards other gas molecules. They're called non-associating. So I don't want to But the temperature of this gas is not absolute zero, is it? For an, for an ideal gas, the rule goes at zero degrees Kelvin, the gas theoretically, although it doesn't really happen that way, it liquefies and doesn't become a gas before then. But if it were an ideal perfect gas, the volume would go to zero. The rule breaks down by the time we get really cold. But at room temperatures, all gases at 25 degrees Celsius, I believe it's the, the uh, temperature, yeah. Um, at 25 degrees Celsius, they occupy 22.4 liters per mole of gas. And they do so because they are not associating at these temperatures. And what do you suppose those molecules are doing with that temperature? What is that temperature a measure? The kinetic energy, Ex exactly. And so think about these gas molecules as little billiard balls in a three-dimensional space, right? They're constantly doing what? They're constantly trans translating from place to place. And when they bounce into the wall of the balloon, 
boom. They are pushing it out, boom, boom, boom. And when they hit other gas molecules, they're also doing it. So this whole thing is just going And there's billions and billions of collisions occurring in this balloon all the time. A major number of those collisions are occurring on the wall of the balloon, and that's what's physically forcing the balloon to be expanded. And it's expanded to this volume because the elastic force of the balloon, if this were let to go open, would force it out, the gas in here, out into the atmosphere because the atmosphere is currently less pressure than what's in here. If I took this balloon and closed it and then put it into a vacuum container and started uh, pumping out the atmosphere around it, what do you suppose the balloon would do? It would expand because there would be less pressure pushing on this side of the balloon. So in this context, there's collisions, billions of collisions on the outside of the balloon, there's billions of collisions on the inside of the balloon. Our atmospheric pressure pushing on us, pushing on all of us, is pushing on our bodies, every square inch, 14.7 pounds. You have tens of tons of pressure from this atmosphere pushing on you all the time. Why aren't you crushed? Yeah, we have an atmosphere of pressure pushing on the inside out, too. And so, we balance those pressures. If we were to, without a scuba system, take a little dive, how many have free dove to a reasonable depth, let's say 20, 30 feet? Okay, including me, that makes one. Uh, <laughs> if, if you, even 10 feet of water, if you dive down to 10 feet depth of water, you can feel that pressure on your body. It feels like, you know, it's crushing you, right? 10 feet of water is only a third of an atmosphere. You have to get to 30 feet of water to equal the pressure of our atmosphere. So by the time you get to 30 feet, there's two atmospheres of pressure on you, okay? Or over 25, uh, or no, I'm sorry, 29, uh, pounds per square inch, of course. Now, if you have a scuba tank, the regulator adjusts the pressure of the gas going into your mouth so that it's also 29 point whatever uh, pounds per square inch, and it keeps the pressure balanced, and you don't notice the pressure. As a matter of fact, I've dove to depths of about 250 feet, uh, and uh, I was breathing just fine. But what's interesting is, at 250 feet, actually far earlier than that, gases start to act a little bit differently for you. And one of the things is nitrogen narcosis. And I experienced this at about 100 foot depth one time. Uh, I got loopy. Uh, breathing just air, but the solubility of gases increases as the pressure increases. So nitrogen becomes a, a narcotic. And so I was laughing at myself running out of air. Uh, literally, I looked at my gauge, it was in the red line, I was just like, oh, wow, that really sucks. Because uh, I was at about 120 foot of depth and uh, I needed to get to the surface. But um, when I ran out of air, actually, a buddy of mine was, was uh, doing uh, security safety with me and watching me die uh, and uh, rescuing, so to speak. Um, so he watched me, and I ran out completely at about 90 feet, and uh, I slowly breathed out as I slowly ascended from 90 feet of depth. And when I got to the, we had a tied off tank and regulator at about 20 feet to decompress to get the solubilized gases out of our system, because otherwise if we come up too fast, it'd be like opening a soda bottle. All those dissolved gases in my blood would bubble out, give me what's called an air embolism or the bends, both of which are bad. So I breathed, I breathed out slowly as I got to my tank, and I still had a breath of air. How is that possible? Right. 
So what I had in my lungs at 90 feet was three times the volume of air compressed, right, into my, into my lung volume. So as I was going up and swimming up, I breathed out slowly and continued to blow out bubbles. What, else, what if I had freaked out and held my breath? You swim up fast, hold your breath. Yes, my lungs would have burst. And on the whole good bad scheme of things, that's right up there with the bad. So, um, these kinds of things will help save your life. <laughs> Other things will also help save your life from going to them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to breathe this gas, and I want you to hypothesize, maybe you've seen this now, maybe you've seen Jimmy Kimmel's little show, um, but it's kind of a unique uh, experience. And so... This gas is obviously heavier. The gas is sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. It's not toxic. It is denser than air by a substantial amount. And so I want you to hypothesize right now what do you think it's going to do to my voice, and then we're going to try and figure out why, of course. <coughs> so. Is anybody musically talented here, like can sing? Wow, cool. I might have to have you sign a uh, waiver or something. If you're interested. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to try and sing. <laughs> <laughs> I have sang in choirs before. It has happened. But, uh, I'm going to try and sing something, and I don't know what yet, but... Side note. 